The question is, will AI take away jobs? Will it reduce wages? And instead of speculating, I like to look at the history of economic thought. The history of economic thought often has ideas that were discussed 100 or even 200 years ago, and they are analogous to the ideas and issues in economics today. The only difference is they give us a clearer understanding using economic theory of what's going on. Probably, ironically, technology is a distraction and information is an overload on us so we can't sift out what is true and what is not true anymore. So I like to refer back to the history of economic thought, economic theory, the great minds of the past, and see if they had any insight. I'm doing my PhD dissertation on Knut Wicksell, a Swedish economist in the 1800s and early 1900s. He was primarily dealing with monetary theory, but he also dealt with something called the machine problem. And if we say the machine problem is analogous to AI, because AI is really just a machine for intellectual work, uh, then we can uh, take some of the ideas from his theory. In the past, machines were labor-saving devices. That means heavy physical labor was replaced with machinery, mechanical physics. AI is replacing intellectual work. And one of the differences is AI, the changes will come extraordinarily swift. Machines, to set up a machine, you needed capital, people moving it in, land, tangible and physical things, displacing. So it may take a long time before a factory is set up and it displaces workers. Where AI, it comes so swiftly that you can download it on your desktop, some program, or obviously it's in the cloud, probably using a Linux server somewhere, and you can just access it on a browser. The whole world can. So the rate of change is much faster than machines and the economic landscape will be transformed so fast we won't know what happened. Getting back to the economic theory of Knut Vicksell and the machine problem, in the early beginnings of his thought, he believed in something called a compensation theory. Using marginal productivity and marginal analysis, he was a marginal part of the marginal revolution, he believed that productivity would increase, output would increase through labor saving, and basically wages and employment would be un unaffected because there was something called the compensation theory. But even a year later, or two years later, this was like 1899, 1990, 1900, he thought about, in 1901, in lectures, he published a revision of that theory as he thought more about it. People back then just had time to think. They weren't distracted. And he said, output will increase because that's what capitalism does. That's what society does. It tries to maximize output, but wages will go down. And employment will go, <laughs> unemployment will increase, employment will go down because workers are gonna be displaced. This is what we all think. This, is, this seems intuitive. This is what we all feel. Now, of course, you know, I'm a little bit more optimistic. Uh, you know, I watched the Jetsons growing up. It was a cartoon, space age cartoon of the future, where they were complaining about going back to the three day work week. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little more optimistic in the sense that, yes, there's a short run displacement, but in the long run, it will all even itself out. And that's something Adam Smith might say. Ricardo, going back further, he would say that uh, actually output would eventually decrease, but he was all off base. So, but Vixel's insight was very interesting. He felt, at least for the short term, and it's probably going to happen, wages are going to go down, real wages, and output will increase. And the issue is this, that society, max, uh, society maximizes output in economics, but it doesn't maximize societal utility. Societal utility is just a jargon term. It's just a buzzword that econo economists use for happiness. So overall, happiness will not increase because wages are not increasing. Uh, they're going down in real terms, but uh, output is maximized in a capitalist economy, and that was the problem. 
you know, Vixal was a, a Swede and he married a Norwegian, so he's all into the Scandinavian ideas of, okay, simple, we just take government and transfer wealth from the, uh, in the private sector. And this is the compensation theory that results because the machine problem or AI has created this issue of displacement. Uh, well, you know, that's not necessarily going to happen in this world that we live in. I wasn't born yesterday. There, it may go back and forth and may gravitate towards that. And I don't even think that's the optimal solution. Free market economists would say the optimal solution is just let it, let it all happen. And what will happen is the wealth of everybody will increase. And as the wealth increases, we'll all boats go up at a rising tide. We'll all feel it. It's not, it's not like I'm poorer than the people, you know, peasants in the 1800s. I'm probably richer, even though machines have displaced everything. And AI will do the same. So the, the idea for you individually is to be on top of this wave and to, you know, seek out ways as an entrepreneur to uh, be advantageous and, uh, and, and take advantage of the good things about the displacement of the machine problem or the, really the AI issue. Uh, yesterday, the, yesterday it was. Yeah, yesterday I asked AI to do some code. It did it in literally a few minutes that it would take me all day if I ever could have done it. Ironically, it didn't come out that great and I had to go back and do it by hand. But uh, so, you know, maybe AI is in its early stages. But the point being is this wages are going to go down and uh, but total output is going up. Maybe that's what we're seeing. A lot of people are saying, well, we can't find enough workers. It's because this technological wave, this creative destruction in a positive way, uh, as Schumpeter, Austrian economist, is happening already. We are being displaced. And it, it doesn't seem like it's, it seems like it's going to be OK. It doesn't seem like the whole world is falling apart. It seems, yeah, we have to work. We have to find uh, productive endeavors to uh, replace our time. But just because they can't find enough workers, it, it doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Another wave might be nuclear fusion, free energy. But these, this AI will replace every aspect of intellectual work, just like machines produced labor saving opportunities, AI will be intellectual, anything you do with the brain. And I guess we're going to go into some, let's say, utopia where we're all doing things that we really wanted to do. But I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit skeptical in that regard because, you know, human nature, we're all going to gravitate to the easiest dopamine rush and that might be the computer and just being in the digital world. But that's another story. But overall, society, in my mind, should get better in the long run. But Knut Vixell pointed a very good point that in the short run, wages will probably go down. And even though output will go up and there'll be unemployment or some sort of underemployment. Let's see what happens. What do you think about the machine problem and Vixell's analysis compared to my a little bit more optimistic idea that in the long run, it will be more like the Jetsons. We'll all get rich and, you know, we'll all have a little bit more free time as long as we keep the assets we're accumulating. You maybe buy some land and do productive things at home, go back to these cottage industries. As long as we're, we stay industrious and productive, using our minds in other ways than doing the robotic tasks of working on an Excel spreadsheet all day or answering at a call center. So even as I'm articulating this, may, may, maybe it's even a better thing than the machines in, in the sense that the labor saving, you know, working in a field, it's, it's kind of fun work. But sitting in a cubicle and doing Excel spreadsheets, you try doing that for 10 years, you'll see how bored you get. May, maybe AI is even more liberating than the machines. And Vixel was totally incorrect, but uh, in the long run. But we're going to have to see. Let me know what you think about will AI take away our jobs and create less employment opportunity and lower our wages? Or will it generally just have an incredible wealth effect? We'll all get wealthier. We may have less work time like the Jetsons, but it's not everything's going to be OK. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much.